Arsenault and Deacon Mark Gauthier. This is the Pastor's Chat. The Pastor's and Chat. Good afternoon. Good, good to afternoon, have you with day. us. It's great yeah. to have you on board. And uh, this is a great weekend, isn't it? This, yeah, this, a lot going last, on. You know what? Last Sunday, and, I, and, and Father John gave me a funny, in, uh, curious look. I said, we're entering into the dog days of summer. And I don't think he... I don't think he knew what I was that. talking yeah, about. That. Yeah, yeah, dog, dog days, days of, of summer. summer. And this is from it. A, maybe a, um, To Kill a Mockingbird. Or yes, something. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's right. The shank of and, the summer. Kind of and thing. holy smoke, we're getting it now. It's, uh, it's now, right now, outside. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or <laughs> Celsius, rather. And it feels like 37. 37. Going to 40. So, yeah. So, it'll um, probably be there in another hour or so. over your shoulder. It looks like a little bit of rain coming, so it might cool things down a bit. Yeah, that's a good thing, because we could use the rain. I think the rain's hot. a good idea right now, just to be able to sort of tamp down a bit of the humidity. But we can live with that. I think it's the kind of thing <laughs> that we need to say. And we need to remember that our summer... Well, this is it because as soon as we hit the first week of September, so often it's done. We don't have that usually anymore. Before that, like I find that um, usually there's a uh, at least maybe I'm still. <laughs> still yeah, I still got the silly cough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in Nova Scotia, often you get like you know last week of J July, first two weeks of August, then it'd be like a cold snap. And you never really got warm again after that. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. So that's what's, that's what's happening. Well, it's an interesting thing. In the last uh, week or so, I've noticed the, the wind is higher than usual. Mm -hmm. And that must be a good reminder of Nova Scotia, too. There must be always a breeze there's coming a off breeze. the water. Uh, there's something called a thermal. So the land heats up. And then, of course, the ocean's rather cool. So you get a land breeze. So okay. Generally, the, right. there's right. prevailing right. winds. And then, and then every day the, the, the land breeze sets up. And so it's somewhat pleasant all the time. Yeah, well, generally, yeah, if you yeah, live on the so coast, it, yeah, just, it, it, it was beautiful. We used to live in Herring Cove and right on the water. And often you get this sort of uh, um, a breeze from the, from the west. It wow, okay. Just right fresh, on. fresh right air on. right off the right ocean. On. It was wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Well, okay, let's open up in prayer. Yeah, in prayer, indeed. I can name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we ask you blessing upon our time. We ask you to continue to bless um, our people. We ask you to bless, you know, those mm. who may not have yes. air conditioning yes. today. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty right. odd. Yeah. We pray for um, just wisdom and, and uh, strength and uh, just endurance, I think, these, these, I say, dog days of summer. Yeah. And all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mother Mary, pray, pray for, for us. us. Uh, Jeff, thanks for saying hello. Jeff is c contacting us from Vernon, B.C. We have a couple people in B.C. now. Good. They it's check good. in. Yeah, it's so it's kind of interesting. Wait. They think they've moved. I know there's another. Uh, there's Margaret. You don't bring me flowers anymore. <laughs> right on. Margaret actually brought me flowers today. Oh, so, excellent. So Margaret, nice. good yeah. to say hello to you. It's really great Margaret's to have you on board. Margaret's sporting this new haircut. She's kind of got this European look. Yes, looking good. Looking, looking good. good. Yeah, yeah she looks she... happy to be out there and enjoying the weather and so no, on. It's good to see her out. So, just a quick thing to say now I, I, everybody seems to be getting COVID lately. Yeah. I mean, small doses of COVID. Some people are still getting a pretty serious bout yeah, of COVID still kind of thing from the sound of things. And, that, and that's what's going on to you. But you've got that tickle, and we're all familiar yeah. with the tickle. I took a test, actually, a blood test just uh, last week, I think it was, or maybe the week before. And it came back, and what it said, it can read your M signs. You have to pay for this. And uh, the, the M signs that I have are consistent with those of someone who's been vaccinated. Uh -huh. So essentially it's saying I probably didn't get COVID, as far as the test can show. But it doesn't necessarily prove that you didn't. I know I got deathly sick um, early June. And it just seems like I haven't really been able to fully. Yes, get you it. were out of commission for a few oh, days. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was you were gone. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, right it was pretty yeah. bad, and, and then night sweats, and you know all the classic symbols. But I kept testing, and I, I've never tested positive. Now, okay. John has. Uh, yeah. David has tested positive. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't know everybody's history, but. Yeah. But I've never tested positive. Yeah, and that's peculiar that way. Like it's interesting for me. Like I got a very small dose of it, and then and then it seemed to just carry on. So it's a peculiar kind of thing, you know. That, yeah. You know what's happening there. So more so, or less back back to normal. Just I just have this tickle in my throat. So it's almost like this urge to to cough all the time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's annoying. But yes, you know, jump over it and gotta you gotta keep moving along. Okay. I know some people are probably asking just over your head. Uh, Father Rob, uh, we have either oh. uh, uh, Igor the Iguana or Larry the Lizard or yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, do you have a story lizard. behind that? Uh, it's it's sort of uh, one of the props left over from VBS, oh, okay. Vacation Bible okay. School. And so there were bigger versions and smaller versions. Last, I think I still have them over there. It's Lawrence the Elk, which I really liked. So he hung out there for a while last year. 
So when I wasn't around on that Friday afternoon, they took everything down, but I found him on my front step. Ah, uh, that's great. <clears throat> so that's I think, I think the people who took it down saved him for me. Okay, glad to hear that. And and the whole theme of what the Vacation Bible School was this year was, I think, excellent. Uh, our God is monumental, uh, our great God, and so on. But uh, the, the theme uh, is also like out in the wilderness, in the desert kind of a thing. And I think it's so important for us as Christians to be able to appreciate that, is that God comes and finds us, seeks us out yeah. in, in our wilderness, and then yeah. draws us to Him. And the theme also was awesomeness. Like, like when you get out in the desert, it's kind of like being on the ocean, which is its sure. own kind of form of a desert. It sounds crazy, but although there's water, it's mostly salt water. Yes, right? so that's you right. can't drink that's it. Right. So, yeah. so uh, you have this vast, vast sea, and there's not much there. At least sometimes you don't see it. But then you get an appreciation for just how big God is. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, uh, I want to be able to, to shift over now because we're, we noticed, if you were at Mass this morning, you noticed that uh, in the sanctuary there's some changes going on. Right. And some of the carpets lifted up. Uh, there's a bit of a ramp happening. Uh, there's some new stairs where there was a ramp or a yeah. so-called yeah. ramp on the other side. So, so how are we doing with that? Where's, where are yeah, we Yeah, we're heading? in good shape, actually. Uh, we've been planning this for a long time. And this is all part of the grant that we received. So we got this $100,000 and it's one of those very strange things. Normally you have to raise money and you have to plan and you yes. have to budget. We were basically given $100,000 and the check arrives in the mail and you cash it, there's no problem, from the government. And all we had to do was provide accessibility for the building just to make it more accessible. So step one was the doors. And we, we went with a contractor who was very good at this. And Great. we had a design, and he had actually a better design. And, and so the, the doors are kind of seamless. They're custom made for us. And when you walk up to them, they're very, very easy oh, to operate. Very effective. They're, yeah, it's really yeah, and beautiful. again, if you're yeah. in a wheelchair or if you're using a walker or if you just have a cane, pulling those doors open was not easy. And custom making some kind of a thing to move those doors would have been difficult. And we still have them. Those doors eventually are going to be between the church and the hall. Remember oh, down, going down that yeah, hallway? The hallway, yeah. Oh, near okay. the bathrooms, right. past the bathrooms. Yeah. So that's step one. Step two of that was addressing the... We did have ramps. We had two ramps on either end of the sanctuary. But now with the bathrooms are done and the doors are done, the only place that's not accessible is the sanctuary itself. And again, you can imagine, like even with Father Dennis when he was here, he was having trouble with those stairs. Yes, absolutely. He finally got those yeah. uh, kind of braces for his legs, and I think that helped a bit. And But you could see a thing where he would not have been able to celebrate Mass here, yeah. or he need help getting yeah. lifted up into the sanctuary. Even two stairs. Uh, even two stairs yeah, are yeah, really a barrier right. for some yeah, people. That's right. Some of our yeah. readers are, are uh, you know, seniors, and, and I think they would have a hard time with that. <clears throat> Beyond that, the ramps themselves that were already there, I don't know if they were original, or somebody retroed them in later, but they were so steep, they are actually dangerous. Like yeah. they, they were a, haz a hazard. If someone thought, oh, it's a ramp here, I'll take this. Yeah, you know, they, they I, my face. memory tells me, and I, I could be wrong here, but I think they, as long as I remember, they were there. It, the, the black railings yeah. got added. At, at a okay, well, that's point. good. Okay, so that, yeah, that was helpful. That was better but, than not. But, but then, yeah, I mean, at least you could grab the railing to try to get up those little ramps. So. I lived in that. I had some new yeah. pair. I had a shoes there, and I had my resole, so they're pretty slippery, but leather soles. And I used it as like a treadmill. I could actually run on it. It was right. so steep. <laughs> so what we right did on. is, okay, we said we don't need two of them. One would be sufficient. And if we're going to put one in, let's put it by the lectern because that's where people coming up to probably yeah. read is the most typical yeah. thing. Sure, sure. The other one we just simply took out and we put it back to stairs and it will be just like the rest of it once the sure. carpet's there. So <clears throat> what we have now is the ramp. There'll be a little piece added to it. It's the metal piece that makes the transition. So oh, yes. it'll, be, it'll be smoother. Okay. And then, yes, because it's it's missing the floor by about uh, two inches, three yeah, inches. Yeah, and that's all okay. standard. That's right. all. Okay. The right. guys who did the work were excellent. They were just excellent. Then I thought it was going to be like a big project and pull it all apart. And I'm thinking, in my world, that's probably um, uh, maybe you know a week at least. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> about four hours. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much and it would take in. me long, longer than that it's probably. So yeah, so I know what you mean. Yeah. In. Yeah. And then the problem was, then now there's going to be a barrier. Now we can't, until we got the ramp in, we couldn't really make the barrier. So we custom ordered a barrier. It's going to be powder black, um, and it's going to come all the way down, very, very strong. <clears throat> and it will be there with the glass panels in it. Ah, uh, excellent. Okay. And so when you walk up, you'll have something to hang on to. The problem with that was it got kind of tight to the ambo. 
that we, we read from. It right. wasn't really right. room there, and we weren't sure if we're going to have to move the ambo. But we came up with even a more eloquent solution. It was sort of turned at an odd angle. That it almost faced out into the uh, parking lot. And so we just turned it so it faces a little bit more of the main body I, of the I church. I noticed that this morning. It, yeah, it it's funny. It's not much. Yeah, it's yeah, 15, right on, 20 right, degrees. Yeah. But then you're standing behind it, not between the two. Yes. Okay. So we never had to really move it very much. We just twisted it a bit. Okay. So that gives that space behind, right, behind it for you. what we need. Now, okay, I think it's kind of comfortable because then you'll have this railing just to your right, which is almost like a place you could touch or a reference point that right, makes so, it more comfortable. Right, so it should right. be fine. Good. So sounds very, very good. Yeah, I think it'd be great. So that's where we're heading. And I, and I think you mentioned this morning the carpet's coming in by right. the, at the end of this week. So, so you... Wednesday morning after Mass, uh, we'll move everything off the sanctuary. And I think we'll give us a little bit of time because on Wednesday afternoon, a crew is coming in and it's going to strip the carpet. It won't take very long because these guys are all professionals. They just cut it out. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. But you never, never really know what you're going to find. We think the floor looks really good. It has been better, I have to be honest, than I thought. But we'll take it all out. And then the new carpet comes in Friday morning. Excellent. So Thursday and Friday, we'll probably go back to the hall and have mass in the hall. And yeah, there hasn't, there hasn't been a lot of spills that I can recall. A lot of, you know, messes and problems like that. So the carpet is just old more it's than little, anything well, else. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little dated. I mean, it's, the color's really strong. Um, I know Tony had a hard time when he was trying to use the cameras because the color right. is so monochrome that it kind of... It, it's hard to get that color to yes. look right on film yes. is, is difficult and we are streaming not, not, it's not just about that but so the color that we chose is a little more subdued it's actually very close to the original carpet ah okay it was there okay. It, it's a it's a fleck it's a, um, a berber which is kind of a combination of different things yes and it's kind of a tan a tan color with a little bit of green in it a bit of olive green which is close to the floor. It should match the floor pretty well. Good. So it won't be the same as the floor. It's, so the sanctuary is marked different, but it won't be as bright. Like the and most... that's the importance of something there, yeah, to, right. to, to have a difference that you're you, stepping into. You want to mark it yes. different because it is a special place. It's, yes. a, it's a sanctuary where we celebrate Mass. But it doesn't necessarily have to be bright red. Okay, which was no, for sure. <clears throat> kind for of sure. The, the most striking feature of the sanctuary is, is the carpet. Yeah. And I kind of like it to be the Lord or the artwork or, or something else yeah. or the altar. Yeah, focus on the altar more so than, than everybody's the looking at the floor. So yeah, yeah, it's a right way on. of trying to do that. So I, I don't mean to be critical, but someone chose that carpet. They chose it for a certain reason. I, I, again, just saying that, that maybe it's time to, it's a little more subtly. Well, Let's try something well, different. Well, also, and it's been 45 some years kind of thing mm. now. Um, the original carpet, I think 45 years. That one probably be 20, 25 or something. Okay, all right. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure when it went in. All right. And again, not being critical, they tried to spruce it up a bit. Um, maybe it's, you know, and we thought about that. We could go back to almost the same thing. But if we're going to put a new carpet in and we're doing this, and again, I think it's all going to fit under the grant. Why not try something different and just see what that would look sure, like? Sure, sure, sure. So that, yeah, exactly. As you say, because of the grant, and that's the idea is uh, if we, and I think you had mentioned that, if we don't use the grant within a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. then it's removed from us. We have two years right. to spend so, the money. Okay, and good. so really, if it's a $100,000 grant, we want about a $110,000 project. Right on. So right we on. would add just a little bit of our own money at the end and spend really all the money. Uh, it just makes sense. I mean, we'd give it back, well, obviously, if we didn't use it, but... Those two projects, they, they cost a little bit more than you sure, think. The sure, doors are quite sure. expensive. And it's, and it's looking great. It's, it's yeah, a great so thing to be able yeah. to have what we need uh, up there and so on. Um, a couple of questions here. Uh, it's, Jeff, glad to see that. It's not going to go below 32 as a high here until at least next Saturday. Wow. Okay, so it's going to be hot, hot out, yeah. out on the West Coast. And Margaret's asking a question. You want to... Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. Um, the the, the 10 15, well, there's, there's two things in the works. So... One, I'm not sure if we're going to change mass times or not. This is something we've kind of put back a little bit until the fall. And, and you know, are we going to think about, or at least try, a 9 and, a, and an 11? Right, okay. okay that's yep. one question. The other question, it's kind of with the, um, uh, the choir, is they've lost a lot of the key music people. And, and so the choir themselves, I think, are going to have to figure out what they do and how uh, they okay. do it. Okay, okay. Including right. who's going to play. Because I, I don't know, you know, Diane left and she went to put out and some other the key people that used to play or, or have moved on as well. <clears throat> so the choir themselves, I think, are going to have to sort of sort out that question. Sure, about sure, what sure. they do. And I know when, when Diane left, it was really quite beautiful and they, and they, they kind of had a big turnout and, 
and again for Diane, she did so much work for the church, and, and you, you couldn't it is you yeah. couldn't do enough for that's her, right. and that's that's wonderful. But going forward, do they have the musical talent? Do they have them again? Not so much the singing. I think they still have a number of singers, but do they have someone who plays? Yeah, various yeah. instruments and things. Yeah. And even if we did it. It may not be every single Sunday. And 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 again, as you say, um, some people have moved away. Um, there are some people that are not active anymore in that way. So yeah. so it's it's something to look at and something that could be built on depending on what the resources are that, yeah. that are out there. So that's an Sometimes important thing. Sometimes the lens you look back to too is, is is twenty years. So anybody part of that choir? I mean, they, they get along very well. They're very social. Sure. They sure. they actually met. I think all the way through COVID, like on Thursday nights, which was their normal night for practicing so they so yeah it's a lot of history there and they look back to that 20 years and say well, yes. that was wonderful yes but what do we do in the next five years well yeah and i think that's a really good point father rob is to be able to say uh okay 20 years and yet it was great we have great memories of that but we need to be careful not to be always wanting to go back to what was and yet say what are the resources we have now and who are we yeah. and, and how can we express ourselves now? Because we're always seeking to, 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 to worship as best as we can as a body of Christ. And that's right across the board. Yeah. Like Again, this is part of the struggles that we're having. Yeah. We, we, as we, we came out of COVID, this is a few months ago, uh, we started asking questions. Well, how many readers do we have? Well, not that many. Yeah, that's how many true. Christian ministers do we have? Almost none. Yeah. Like It's fortunate that Father John and I or yourself are able to be at some of these masses and, and that's good but we, we, we everything yeah. went across the board yeah. and then musicians yeah there was a time when um we had could have so few people in the building uh, a singer player was the best way to go because they could sing and play yes and maybe one or two people at the most so whole choral singing was off the table now i, I don't believe there's any restrictions as far as choral singing is concerned but then all the masses really have to look at this and say okay you know what we had before was good where do we go now? Is it every Sunday? Is it part time? Could we do things a, a little bit differently? Can we try some different things? There might be some different ensembles. There might be some people out there that have never come forward with musical talent as well. Good so, point. I don't know. Yeah, and and it's an opportunity, isn't it? We're looking at uh, two years plus where uh, we were shut down, we were restricted. There was all kinds of things mm -hmm. going on, and now we have an opportunity with a new, like a, a fresh. Uh, breath of air, being able to say, well, what can we do now? And, and, and how can we express ourselves with who we are and what we have at our disposal? So it's that kind of... And, and again, be clear, not just musically. Like that's right across good, the board. Very good point, yes. Because it's right. everything we do, I think we're going to have to look at. And I know it's painful because it, it's like, well, we're, COVID's over. You know, why do we have to keep talking about this? But that's the new reality when you look around the parish and say, well, this is what we got. Yeah. Yeah, right. and, and so build slowly, grow with it, and and allow ourselves to to express ourselves and to to, to know what's happening. And right. I think that's important. Okay, so you have a new uh, position as well that's yeah. just begun this week. Is there anything that you uh, can Not tell a us whole about? Not a lot. That? I no? mean, it's it's we're just starting to meet, right? This is this new Episcopal vicar. In some ways, it's just an extension of exactly what I just said to you. So we right, could operate right. as a parish. What do we got? Where are we going? How does it operate? Okay, great. The whole diocese has to ask the same question. Yes, yes. And say, okay, are there parishes that, 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 that really haven't been making it for some time? Are there parishes that are doing well? Maybe we've got to find out why yes. they're doing well. Is it a geographical thing where they just happen to be in a big growth area? Or are there pastors doing stuff that's different? Sure. You know, and they've tried some new events, you know, what they did during COVID and how they're doing outreach and all that kind of stuff. So it's a complicated question, and then just trying to feel our way through that, and then trying to come up with something for the diocese, which which is both the French and the English, and includes Cornwall now. Yes, that's right. It's larger diocese. <clears throat> it's larger yeah. diocese. It's a lot of different cultures. It's almost like sometimes I find this when I, I do work uh, here in the parish. It's there's like the the Saturday night mass. There's the Sunday morning yes. at the eight. There's the the ten o'clock, the six o'clock. They're different cultures. Yep, yep. Different so congregations with each one. So, yeah, but they're, they're, right. they're very different. Yes, and their right. histories are that's different so and their backstories are different. Yeah. And though, so Father John and, and Father Joshua is starting to come into his own. Myself, of course, we're consistent within that. <clears throat> but they all are different. And then you have to kind of figure out what they're about and how to get them kind of pulling in the same direction. So just take that and blow it up to the whole diocese. Sure. Now, sure. we're going to get everybody on board. Not a chance. 
can we get some people on board? That would be interesting. And that's what you need is to, to be able to know who can, who will, who wants to, like where's, where's the desire to be able to draw that. And of course, with your experience, because uh, you've had several years of experience now uh, in a role as a pastor uh, here in Nova Scotia and so on, and, and, and you be, you're able to bring that. And of course, what you're doing here is to be able to, bring, to, be able to bring that to the diocese. Well, like, I kind of like to see it that way is that what we do here is a model. Yeah. Now, sure. It sounds good. I don't think we're in a position where we could say we've got this figured out. But at least we could be, you know, trying some innovation and trying to do some, uh, something I heard from a parishioner once, microbursts, like just trying little things. Sure, sure. They're different. Like I think the VBS, I can keep going back to that, but that was extraordinarily well done. Yeah. It had an impact that was yeah. wide. It yes. was based on outreach. It had an element of um, evangelization and, and the charisma and, and the, like it's all there, okay. Yep. What else can we do? Yep. That you know, like Alpha, we do that, and and then our liturgies, we do that, and then trying to bring back, I think, a, <clears throat> our, our youth program, we're building that up again, and so all these things are should be working together. Yes. And and though I don't think it's ever we're working opposed to each other. It was now was as clear that the, the, the unity in the vision of, of yeah. What's the purpose? What what are, why are we doing this? Right. What and I think the, the the bottom line is that we're aiming to be a better worshiping community, a better worshiping family of God, kind of a thing. So it's well, uh, I mean, I, I, sometimes I talk like this, I feel get nervous, but have a good look around. Yes, you know, look around when you're next to your church. Look at the people and say, okay. 10 years from now, realistically, how many people will still be, be able to come to church? Sure, sure. Now, yep. it doesn't mean you ignore those people. They're the ones paying the freight. They're the ones that kept the thing going. But if we don't find a way to reach out to young families effectively, consistently, um, we're going to be one of those parishes. Yeah, yeah. And you can't wait five years and, and do some, you know, visioning or you know just talk about it and whiteboard it and we really need to start doing that now yep absolutely so i i wish you all the best and also let's encourage everyone please pray for father robin what his <laughs> role is uh at the uh, archdiocese level um to be able to sort of like wake us up to being more aware of our surroundings of what we're called to be and but primarily about who we are Right. You know, we're children of God. We're called uh, to uh, draw closer to the Lord, to, to seek ways of praising God, uh, seek ways of worshiping properly and effectively. Uh, and you mentioned this even in your homily, how to be more effectively, uh, without shame, Catholic. Catholic. And that's kind of the takeaway from the Holy Father's visit. I thought what he did, he doesn't have the charisma of John Paul II. Like John Paul II would just open up. The, oh, yeah, 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 everywhere right. he went, that's he was right. like a rock star. It's yeah. amazing. Okay, different guy. Um, Benedict uh, had this laser logic. He just spoke very clearly and very precisely, and that was effective. <laughs> it's kind of what we're used to. Um, Francis was different, but I thought he did some really good things. And the way he presented it, and, and he kind of pushed back a little bit, you know, gently, but nonetheless, God, you know, it's not all about you. I mean, we have something to say here. Right, yes. So we did all that stuff. So that idea of, of speaking into that culture in an authentic and effective way. So in my homily, I was trying to say, like, you know, to know what you're doing and to be engaged in it. So to know the Lord. I mean, sometimes we just talk about this. Do people know Christ? Yeah. Do they know yeah. Jesus in yeah. a personal yeah. way? Right. And are you praying? Are you experiencing him in the sacraments? Are, are you learning more about him in our adult formation programs and ongoing? Okay, great. Are you looking for that particular charism that is yours? Yes. <clears throat> so people who can play music, that's great. They need to be playing it. People who read, proclaim, serve, do hospitality, like all these things. It was kind of nice. Uh, Juliana normally does hospitality for us, but she's away. She's in uh, Halifax. So uh, Victoria stepped in. And it's great. That was great. Yeah, it was very it was, good. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, and we turned on the gathering. air conditioner, yeah. which is also nice. Yeah. But there was no drop off. I mean, this is the thing. People in their charism. Yeah. When you see people working in their charism, they're they're happy. They're effective. It all works. So okay. So know the Lord, know your charism, and and that that old fashioned word, uh, apostolate. You know, to know what it is that you're being asked to do for the kingdom of God. But never give up on the outreach. That's right. We got yeah. to be reaching yeah. out, even when people aren't too keen or don't want to talk to you. Okay, fine, fine, fine. 
Your job is not to get people to come to church. Your job is to represent the church in a Right age. on, right. Matter of fact, I, I've read um, recently and very much in line with what you're saying is we need to remember that uh, the church is a sacrament of God to the world. Right. And, and, and the, so we need to make sure that uh, God, who is always wanting to call um, people into relationship with him, uh, wants to call people uh, f- through us. And, right. and with us, and it, that, and that's what that's all about. I had some old friends stop in today uh, from Halifax. They're they're here um, visiting. It's just Beautiful. a surprise, right? Beautiful. So it's nice, and they've come before, and it's it's not. A, but it was, and I didn't know they're coming. So I turn around, and here's people I used to sail with, right, from the marina. And I always thought that was. I know I talk about sailing a lot, but when I used to go to the marina, I went there to sail my boat. It was my day off. I used to race a bit. That was that was in Halifax, but people got to know what I did, and I always thought that was my little outreach. People mm, wouldn't necessarily mm, go to yes, church, for sure. weren't necessarily a part of it. And I could almost see it sometimes. I'd be talking to somebody in the clubhouse afterwards and, you know, drinking a beer and just talking to them and just sharing life and talking about things. And they're almost like, oh, no. Like, you're, you're a nice guy. I like you. I'm, I'm relating to you well, but you're a priest. Now what? Yeah. Did I say anything I shouldn't have said? No, I just want to that. It's almost like, if, if a good guy that I can relate to... Yeah. Yeah. Is could be a priest, maybe I got to rethink this. Yeah, because they in their mind's sure. eye had just sure. written off religion as just yeah. a bunch of nonsense, yeah. Yeah. and yet here's a guy they kind of like, and 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 then they just, just didn't like, and right on. and he seems to be into it. Maybe we need. And then once I brought the sisters down, once the uh, servants of the cross, they all came down in full habit, <laughs> and we went sailing. on the boat. And, and again, they're like <laughs> people are popping their heads up, looking at this guy. I've never, I've never. And these are young sisters, right? So it's. So that was a blast. So just the, like, Excellent. But, but yeah, That's they go beautiful. home and they think about it, right? Yeah. And you kind of relate. It's like, yeah. God, there's, there's yeah. still nuns. There still are nuns around. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there are. Yeah, we're real. We're, uh, we're, we're the ordinary. Uh, of God. Right. That's, that's what we're called to be in the world, is we're called to, to be present uh, and be the presence of God, re- representative. Um, I'm, uh, I remember Bishop Barron once used the term viceroy. That, yeah. that we're, we're the viceroys of God, that, that, that we're there to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, well, do it well. Do, in, do it in, as well in, as in we can. In an incredible and engaging way. Yes. Now, yeah. what happens from that? Okay, you could have the best, beautiful outreach you could imagine, and people still walk away. Fine. It's not your sure. responsibility. Sure. You could have a little token effort of just sort of saying grace at a, I mean, even bowing your head quietly at a restaurant, and somebody at another table looks at that and goes, oh, man, same grace. I, I've, mm. se- I've seen that happen, when, and it's really interesting. I still remember this incident where uh, we were out for dinner, and we said, we said grace, much like what you just said, and I heard a little girl at the table next to her says, Daddy, we didn't pray before we ate. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, funny. that's great. And I, I had <laughs> so. the same thing. And one came, uh, who's actually our hostess, and she came by, you know, usually they come back and check, and she yes. said, uh, oh, we just went offline. Just wait a second here. And we're back now. Okay. okay, sorry, we're just starting to lose it. We might have to. We have, there we go. We're back now. So, so, um, so I was just saying that I, doing that once, just quietly, was with a friend of mine, it's a seminarian, and we paused and we said grace and made the sign of the cross. And our hostess came back over to, so that you know, say, so usually do, you know, how sure, are you doing, how sure. are your meals? That's right. And she just kind of quietly said, I just want to thank you for your public display of faith. I think it's really important. And then she went away. Wow, fantastic. You know, That's actually. She was a Catholic or a Christian, excellent. or I don't know, know what her story was, but. But she kind of appreciated it, so it's good. Well, that's really important, and I don't think we realize enough. Um, matter of fact, uh, Rosemary uh, often mentions we watch baseball, and she says the number of guys that come to the plate and they they do the cr- sign of yeah. the cross before they get get into the box, you know, kind of thing, and, which I think is super, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it sometimes it feels a little superstitious, but well, I don't, I don't really it, know. It could be, and Rosemary but I still even say, said, "There it is." Well, and no. Rosemary says if both sides are praying for victory, mm, God must be having trouble with that. Yeah, I or, think or. You know, maybe they're praying just to do well. Well, know? to do well and to not get hurt. Not get you know, hurt. Yeah, to me, that might be that may be all. You know? it's not a yeah. bad thing. The uh, I was watching that, I'm laughing because I'm um, lost it again. We're gonna have to end this pretty quick. Okay. So uh, I was watching a series of Rocky movies um, just last night, and I got I got hooked on it, and that's it's sure. part for me. It's just it reminds me of my high school days, sure. right? So Rocky sure. and, and that kind of thing. And he makes the sign of the cross before he box. 
And, and I just thought that was kind of cool. That, that, and, and even his manager said to me, every time you do that, it makes me nervous kind of thing. But, <laughs> but it is a sign of faith in a movie yeah, that, it is. that you it don't is. get yeah. a lot of faith right. you know, in, in movies right. these days. Yeah. We keep jumping in and out here. I think it was very stable to the last five minutes. So maybe we should uh, finish up there. We've done very well. We should wrap it up. And thank you for joining us. Appreciate your being with us this morning. So I'll say a closing prayer yeah, and you good. can give us the blessing. Okay, fair enough. All right. Name Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you. Thank you for this day, for the wonder of your life within us. And we ask, Lord, that you would still and continue pour out your grace in our lives, that we may share your love with others. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Lord, watch over God and protect you. Saints and angels intercede for you. We God bless you now, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us. Play safe. Right on.